G'day everyone and welcome to uh, my next Let's Play. This one will be of Rome Total War. It's a modded version, Darth Mod. Um, specifically Darth Mod because I didn't want to stray too far from the original, but I wanted it to be improved a little bit. Some extra factions um, and the extra units that come along with it. Um, you might be saying, why aren't I playing uh, Europa Barborum or Rome Resurrectum 2 or Rome Total Realism? And, you know, I thought, well... They get a lot of videos on them already, and I, I kind of wanted to do something that sort of sticks to the original because of, um, of course, Rome 2 coming out later this year, in a couple of months actually. So, I decided that we'd play Darth Mod, and I chose one of the factions that aren't default in, um, in the vanilla Rome, which is Thrace. And here you can see that we um, start in, with uh, five... Um, f uh, five town, sorry, and um, also that you should note that this is the provincial campaign, which means that the map's a lot bigger. Um, as you can see, it's it's huge. Um, you can you have the choice to play the standard game, but I decided that I'd play on the bigger map because um, undoubtedly I'll go to war with Macedonia very soon, and as a slightly weaker faction, I'm going to need the extra room to um, uh, build up my troops, otherwise they'd be able to siege each of my territories and in probably one move walk. So... Um, this gives me a little bit more freedom and, you know, it should it should be good. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll get straight into it. Um, as you can see, we hold Byzantium and um, a couple of other good provinces. This one up here is not so good, but we do have some rich provinces in the south. Um, the good thing about Thrace is that it's a, an interesting mix between the sort of uh, barbarian factions of the north and the um, the sort the more civilized factions of the south. It has the phalanxes of Greece and the um, the barbarian axemen of the the northern tribes. So you know it's it's a nice hybrid mix between the two, and I thought it was in a nice position. Uh, it's a, it's a more difficult position than most factions because we have Macedonia on our on our um, south, and then we have to our north the Dacians. Which, of course, puts us in a, a tricky position because Macedonia will almost certainly go to war with us and see us as a target straight off. So uh, we're going to have to secure some alliances to see what we can do about that. And then to the um, to our east, we I'm not quite sure who's in modern-day Turkey. I th uh, Yeah, to be honest, I, I think it's a horse faction, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, and they'll probably have trouble crossing this anyway, so, you know. But um, we'll, we'll jump right into it with um, improving some of our settlements. Um, a lot of our settlements are going to be put immediately on auto run, so I'm just going to turn them off and then go through and choose some uh, money-making uh, buildings to get our economy up straight away. So I'll probably go with roads and then farms and then mines after that in the other provinces, but uh, let's see, what have we got? we got roads, um, probably going to run out of money very quickly here. Um, more roads. And we'll just go through and put roads in all the in all the towns. Um, this will help. This will help me get my troops around the uh, the, uh, the my country faster. Um, in and also in that case, I might actually move some men from my um, inside settlements that aren't going to be touched by um, any wars because of the situation on the edge of the sea. And I'll, I'll move my troops away from there and put them on my frontier settlement. So that'll be the uh, Philippolis and Philippi. Philippi. So we'll move some men from Tylus. Um, we've got Falksmen. So these are the big, I'm not, I'm not sure if they're axes, but they're, I assume they're Falks. I'm not even sure what they are. Um, but they're, they're, I think they're heavy infantry. Um, so, you know, Yep, heavy infantry, heavy infantry. So we'll move them, and we'll put them in our Philopolis over here. And um, in the north, probably don't have to worry about the north too much, but I will try and secure alliances with whatever factions are up here, just so that I don't get stabbed in the back while I'm trying to fend off the Macedonians. So I think this will be the end of our first turn. As you can see, there are plenty more factions in Darth Mod, which is always a good thing. Uh, you can never have too many factions, I don't think. Which reminds me, that's why I'm going to really love Rome 2. Been looking forward to it for a long time, and um, Rome was always one of my favourite versions of the game to play. And of course, with Rome 2, they're using the sort of the system from Shogun 2, where there's a whole bunch of smaller, almost irrelevant factions that, that fill in, rather than having big spaces filled with rebels. So what this means is there's actually a hundred and something uh, factions... 
in uh, Rome 2 and of course you've got your eight major factions and then you've got your all the rest of them are actually minor factions but it's good anyway because that means you get the the good historical mix of um, uh, factions while still you know retaining some sort of um, uh, you know balance in the game So, uh, looks like we've got our Militia Cavalry. Um, the, I've noticed that the, the Thracians don't have many personal troops that they particularly own themselves. A lot of these are just very generic uh, barbarian troops. So, I'm just going to go through. It looks like we've got Thracian Hoplites, um, uh, Militia Hoplites, Phalanx Pikemen, and Bastanar. Bastane. So they're also heavy uh, heavy infantry, the swordmen. So they should be good in uh, melee fights. Of course, we're going to have the bulk of our armies consisting of um, hoplite units because uh, generally they can just chew through anything. And uh, I'm kind of worried about Macedonia's hoplites because of Macedonia always has known to have very, very long pikes, which is a problem because um, well, when their pikes are longer than ours, they can get to us faster. So we're going to have to employ a lot of um, flanking techniques and things like that to make sure that uh, we've actually got a chance of, you know, fending them back. So up here I'm just sending my diplomat north uh, to find the faction up here. I'm not quite sure where it is. I just can't seem to find it. Um, I assume there'll be a city somewhere around here. Um, and then in the south, what we actually need is another diplomat. So I'll do that right away. Um, let's see. Uh, I've got a diplomat here, and you can have, never have too many diplomats. And why we'll another diplomat here? So this this uh, this settlement looks like it can uh, recruit a lot more units. So w what we'll do is we'll get some more um, phalanx pikemen, and we'll get some cav, and uh, let's see, we'll get another unit of phalanx pikemen, and then a unit of falcsmen. And that should be able to be enough to hold back any immediate attacks by uh, the the Macedonians on that settlement. I might have to shift them around a little bit, but um, at the moment that looks all right. Uh, I'm just going to move my spy down here to keep an eye on any uh, advancing Macedonian army, so that I've actually got a chance to uh, reinforce my cities if I need to. And down here, we're just moving our troops towards the front cities who will be undoubtedly the first targets of any Macedonian attack. It's not guaranteed that Macedonia will attack, I'm just taking the precaution that, you know, they might. Okay, let's see. So we are making quite a bit of money. Um, not as much as some of the major factions, but, you know, it's better than nothing. Um, we've got a new family member and a recruitment report. Okay, so we've got our, our diplomats uh, recruited. Uh, we'll just keep moving this guy around until he finds a city. Yes, nope. um, down here, we're going to take our diplomat, and I, I was thinking of sending him across the um, across the Turkey, but we don't actually have a, a port in this city, so that might be the next thing I'll um, construct. And of course, we've got more roads that we can construct. Uh, down here, why don't I recruit my other diplomat? Okay, here we go. So we'll move him to um, Dacia. I have a feeling that if anybody's going to attack me, it'll be Macedonia or Dacia. So what we're going to try and do is get a uh, trade rights or an alliance with Dacia to see if they can, um, you know, hold if hold off their attack while I'm dealing with Macedonia. And up here, of course, we'll try and get an alliance, trade rights, and maybe um, after I've sent my uh, diplomat to Dacia, I might send him down to Greece, which uh, if I can secure an alliance with Greece, it might mean that I'll have an ally with uh, with someone who will be able to fight the Macedonians from the south while I'm trying to defend them from the north. Undoubtedly, the Macedonians are going to have superior armies, but hopefully um, I'll, be, I'll still be able to uh, beat them through, purely through tactics, which is, you know, one of the downsides of Rome, of course, is the poor AI, any Total War game. I have yet to play a Total War game where the, the AI has been, you know, particularly good. I'm not saying they're terrible, and Shogun 2 improved it a lot, but, you know, a lot of the time you can do some pretty simple things and trick them into losing. So I am playing this on very hard. Um, the campaign map is on hard instead of very hard because the campaign... Uh, factions tend to get a lot of bonuses on hard and I'm, I'm not a fan of them just cheating their way to victory it just it's kind of unfair so um, 
I set the the battle on very hard, which is it, it still gives them bonuses, but I don't mind as much in battles because um, they are really really stupid. So uh, you know it's fair enough that they get a bonus for it. But on the campaign map, it's just a pain when you're trying to deal with a whole bunch of armies and they're getting stacks spawned out of nowhere. So um, you know I, I just prefer to have um, the campaign on hard than very hard. So down here it looks like the Macedonians are dealing with some rebel problems and immediately we can see that the Macedonians are actually stacking armies up outside their cities. So, you know, I mean, you can you can already tell that the Macedonians will probably attack soon. So here is a Dacian army, actually, and I'll see if I can communicate. No, I can't. Add turn. Um, so next turn I will talk to these Dacians and it does kind of look like they're preparing some sort of attack, so I better um, hurry up and man these cities. Uh, let's see, in the north, our diplomat is still trying to find the, um, whatever city this is. I'm not sure if you can actually tell. Scythia, Scythia, Scythia. I don't know, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but, um, this is one region, so there has to be a city in here somewhere. Uh, I just assumed it would be on the coast, um, and that's a different faction, actually. That's Rebels. Okay, so the Rebels own this here. Um, Scythia owns this. So I'll move my Diplomat up here again and have a look. This is this is one of the problems with this campaign. Um, is that the, the map's so big that you can't actually see where the, the cities are. Uh, it's, not too big. it's not too bad of a problem, but it, it's a bit annoying. So what we're going to do is... Um, I'm thinking I might move my faction leader down to Byzantium. Um... Probably a little bit more protected there. I don't really want to get my... I don't like getting my faction leaders into battle because, you know, if you lose them, you have a whole bunch of problems. So it's better if I just keep him safe. Um, and actually, saying that, I've got uh, only one... Looks like I've only got three... Um, yeah, I've only got three leaders in my country at the moment, which is spreading me a bit thin, actually. Um, I, I, that means most of my cities don't actually have leaders in them, uh, which is always, always a problem. Um, but, you know, hopefully I'll get some sons coming of age soon. So we'll end this turn. Alright, up in the north here, we'll talk to the Dacians. Uh, okay, so we already have an alliance with um, Dacia and we have trade rights. So, you know, on that note, I might actually have a look at our um, diplomacy scene. Thrace has only got enemies with uh, the rebels, of course. Uh, we allied with Scythia and um, Dacia. So, okay, so I probably should have checked this before I started sending my guys up north. Um, so we'll bring back our diplomat. There's no real point in trying to find Scythia now because I already have an alliance with them. Um, uh, the, all I have to really worry about now is Macedonia and probably getting an alliance with Greece and making sure that whatever factions down here in Turkey doesn't excuse me doesn't attack me. So um, I'll just have a scroll down and see who. Okay, so Macedon has a lot of enemies. Uh, they're at war with all of Rome, um, and they're allied with the Greek city states. So there's not much I can do about that. Uh, it doesn't look like I'll be able to ally with the um, the Greeks if I uh, if I want to get the Greeks on my side. It's just not going to happen. Um, and really, uh, with Macedonia's position, there's not there's no other real threat to them. I think the north is mostly rebel states um, or Dacia. It's one of the two. So if if Dacia does border with the northern reaches of Macedonia, I might have an ally there, but uh, it's it's unlikely. And I'm kind of worried that Dacia's already considering stabbing me in the back because, I mean, they're mounting armies on my um, borders. So, you know, if they do, it's not too much of a problem because I'll be able to defend this northern borders anyway. Um, so we'll get as many troops down to the southern regions. And I'm thinking of just doing a an immediate attack on uh, Macedonia before they can attack me. So uh, basically a preemptive strike. It's probably better than waiting for them to come to me. Um, I'm going to try and be pretty aggressive in this um, campaign um, and that's going to involve building up some pretty strong attacking forces straight away. So I'm just going to recruit some more hoplites. I'm going to get these Thracian hoplites, uh, uh, who I'm assuming are better than uh, ordinary hoplites. Um, the Phalanx pikemen are actually more expensive. They have much more armor. 
but the Thracian Hoplites have only a little bit more attack, and the Phalanx Pikemen have a lot more men, so I'm going to go with the Phalanx Pikemen instead of the Thracian um, Hoplites, uh, purely because they've got the, the, the more men and the uh, better armor. Um, they're a little bit more expensive, but not as much as they probably should be. They're only 20 gold more. So, you know, uh, I'm going to get some heavy infantry. And then once they're, once those are uh, recruiting, um, I'll end the turn. Okay, so there's no real sign of any Macedonian attack. Um, I'm going to leave my spy here on the border. And he'll be able to tell me if anything comes anywhere around him. Uh, I kind of like the spies of... Uh, I just wish the spies would have bigger sight ranges because, you know, this doesn't really help me much, but that, that's, a, again, another problem of having the bigger map. Um, so we'll just... We'll keep building up these armies um, until I get a respectable force going. This isn't bad, but I think I have too many... I definitely don't have enough phalanx. So I'm just going to recruit some phalanx units. Uh, let's see, and maybe a uh, cavalry unit. These aren't um, melee cavalry; these are only missile cavalry, um, which I struggle to use very effectively. But you know, once they've thrown all their um, peeler uh, or javelin, I'm not quite sure what the the, the Thracians called them. Um, it should they should be used for. Um, uh, rear charges and everything like that. I mean, we've got the the generals will usually be heavy cavalry, so I'll use them mostly for the attacks because they tend to be very strong in um, Rome, whereas in you know Shogun or um, or particularly Napoleon or an Empire, the um, the generals can, would get destroyed very quickly. But in these early games, they are you know the, some of the best heavy cavalry you can get in the game. Uh, agent found. Um, so we found a enemy agent in um, Philopolis, so yep, no real surprise there. Let's see, war declared, um, Parthia and the Seleucid Empire. It doesn't really c uh, concern me. I think that might actually be Parthia there to be honest, which is good. That means they're going to be turning my attention away from, um, well they, they won't be seeking out to attack me. I'm already having to deal with... Uh, the Macedonians. So I'm just going to move all of my uh, family members down to my front front city so that I've got generals in all my armies. Otherwise I'm just not going to have enough generals to lead the, the armies and they'll just get destroyed. Alright, so I'm just going to keep an eye down here. This is probably going to be the... If I attack, it's going to be the first city I hit. Um, it seems to be the one that's sticking out most. And um, with these mines, already looks like it's going to be a pretty good, pretty good um, target. It's also the capital of Macedon, actually, um, which is even better. It's going to be heavily defended, but that also means that it's going to uh, give me a lot more money and um, potentially weaken the uh, Macedonians. So there's not really much to do in these first beginning turns. I'm going to move my. Um, my diplomat down and see if I can get a trade rights with the um, uh, Greeks and um, while that's happening I might there's, I might move my diplomat north see if I can get some I don't know what factions are up here to be honest I haven't played this in a, a, a while um, see if I can get my diplomat to secure some trade rights with some of the northern factions I don't even know how to get past here um, looks like I'm going to have to go all the way around. You are mistaken, sir. No That's alright. Alright, so we'll just end the turn. Alright. Um, so there's some automatic uh, city building going on, which reminds me I probably should... Um, okay, so Dacia and Macedon just went to war, which is awesome, good for me, um, means that I now have a, a chance to attack them while uh, Macedonia is fighting a two-front war. So yeah, well, uh, what I was saying is I should probably begin to um, 
improve my cities. I'm really not getting enough income to do it, so I'm going to have to move these troops out soon. Um, I'm going to take um, this army here to this border army and probably begin our attack now. I just need to leave some troops behind though. I think we have plenty of um, folksmen, so I think two units should be enough. And from Philippi, uh, we'll get a couple of um, hoplites and range units, um, maybe another cav, and we'll join them up. Now these guys are moving down to reinforce, uh, we'll just sit them in Philippi, and um, yeah, we'll end the turn. Actually, well, where's my diplomat? I'll, uh, uh, he's around here somewhere. There he is. We'll keep moving him south to see if we can get him into Greece. Um, it might be good to get some trade rights going, get some more income flowing. Okay, so that army retreated somewhere. My Ashumi went back to the capital. Um, or he's hiding in these trees. One of the two. That's. I don't think that was him. Um, so we're just. We're gonna go. We're just gonna keep marching. If we get ambushed, so be it. We're gonna join these guys up and then keep heading south. Actually, I won't attack yet. Just keep moving our diplomat. Um, just gonna use my spy to scout ahead a little bit. See if there's any more armies. Doesn't look like it. Looks like this is all that uh, Macedon's using to um, uh, defend these. Um, I'm. Probably going to see a massive full stack army come as soon as I try attacking Pella. Um, but if it does, we, we can play the defensive alright, so it, it shouldn't be too bad. I'd love to get another hoplite unit in there, but um, you know, it's a bit late now. I, I might recruit some hoplite units from uh, Philippi and move these guys down. These guys can actually come join up. Alright. So, end that turn. I have a tendency to fly through my early turns um, because there's really not much to do while you're trying to establish anything. Um, so, I, I do need the commanders, so I'm going to accept him. He's going to move down. Uh, let's see. These guys won't get there in time, but um, I will join them up once I've started the siege. I'm going to... Actually, I might attack Thessalonica first. Um, otherwise I'm going to get sandwiched between, whoops, that was kind of stupid. Can I attack him? Nope. Okay. Um, yeah, accidental misclick. Uh, if I don't attack uh, Thessalonica, it means I'm going to get sandwiched between two, um, uh, Macedonian flanks, so I don't, I don't particularly want to get that happening, so I'm going to attack these guys, take them out, and then go for the capital. And while I'm doing that, I'm just going to move some more troops down south. And then end the turn. Okay, so it looks like Macedonia has um, attacked me. Uh, it's kind of a stupid move because they don't even have a general and I have almost double the amount, of, more than double the amount of men they have. So we'll fight this on the map. Well, this will be the first battle of the campaign, and um, we'll probably end this episode after this, so, uh, you know, we'll try and make this a good battle. Uh, Thresh doesn't have its own uh, little speeches, because plainly because they're, they're not a, a major faction in the original game, so there's nothing recorded for them. I think they get the default uh, Greek, yeah, they get the Greek um, speech, so no point listening to it. Okay, so, um, I'm on the defensive, I could probably just attack, I have the amount of men to do it, but you know, if they want to attack me, um, so be it. I'm just going to get my, uh, my hoplites and my phalanx, group them together, and then just spread them out. Um, let's see, and then I'm going to get my, all my cab together, and put them in the flank. Uh, where they'll be hidden in the trees, 
and just take them off automatic fire. And then I'm going to take my uh, Peltus units, my range units, and sit them behind. Uh, they're also going to take off skirmish mode, and then I'm going to grab my um, Falx heavy infantry and line them up on the, the flanks of my army. And, you know, they'll be able to um, sweep around once the hoplite uh, line infantry is engaged. And then I'll just sit my general behind, of course. So I'm just going to move the army back a little bit, so I've got my cav right on the flank, and then we'll start the battle. So it looks like um, this is the... Uh, reinforcements. One unit of. Um, not even sure what that unit is. They kind of look like Spartans, but I know they're not going to be. And um, yeah, as you can see, their spears are much longer than ours, which means they're going to have the um, the phalanx advantage. But you know, we'll probably have we we definitely have the number advantage. And then down here, we've got the um, the the first force. Uh, the main force who attacked me. Um, I think that's it. I think that's their entire army. And I'm basically going to be fighting these guys up here. So, you know. Um, I might move my army up a little bit. Um, I'd love to get them angled a little bit more. Yep, okay, that should do. And then I think we'll just speed it up and, you know, wait for the engagement. There's not much to do at the moment. You know, it'd be kind of suicidal for the AI to attack this entire army. Um, but, you know, it's the Rome AI, there's not much you can do about it. And, you know, these these mods always say that they, they improve the, um, the battle AI, but it never really happens. You can never really see any difference between them, you know, there's some, they might have longer morale and stuff like that, but most of the AI stuff is really hard-coded into the game, so um, you can't really change it, to be honest. Okay, so it looks like these guys are going to engage uh, my Phalanx Pikemen, um, which is fine, because I've got my Phalxmen on the flank, which will just sweep around and, and hit them in the rear. And they're actually going to move across my line. So all these guys here have um, automatic fire, so they should start firing soon. Yep, here we go. And they're doing some decent damage. And I mean, there's not much we can do, to be honest, we, we're going to have to wait for them to catch up. So I'm just going to run these guys out and then run them behind. And uh, as you can see, the, the, the this guy's brave. Uh, as you can see, the hoplites have engaged each other. Uh, meanwhile, over here, they've still got the, the main force approaching on my right flank. I've got my guys in the trees, hopefully they don't get spotted. Um, but when if he if he does engage, I can very quickly sw sweep around their their rear and just wipe out the entire army. So there's no way for these hoplites to um, defend from two flanks, which is always the weakness of a um, uh, 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 hoplite formation, phalanx formation. So I mean they'll get cut up very quickly, as you can see. I mean they're dropping you know 215 down to 203 already. So, and these these guys aren't even that good, so, um, yeah, these guys will get cut to shreds very quickly. And, you know, I kind of expect this army will actually pull back pretty soon. It's one of the things I really like about the um, uh, Rome game, is that the um, the armies don't actually stay around. If they if they clearly disadvantage, they will actually retreat. I've never, I haven't seen this in the, um, uh, the newer games. Um, generally they just keep fighting until they rout, which, you know, it kind of really isn't realistic because there's no sort of tactical retreats going on by the AI. So I, I do like that of the, um, the older Rome game. And as you can see here, I've already wiped out that Phalanx unit. Um, I probably hardly lost any units, uh, any men in this unit either. So we'll just let my Phalxmen run them down. And, um, I'm thinking I might push up my left flank here and just sweep around so I can get them in a sort of a pincer maneuver 
And we'll do the same with the um, Peltists, who still have plenty of ammo. And, you know, I'm kind of worried about them uncovering my um, hidden units. Oh, they are uncovered. Are they? Yep, he spotted my uncovered units. Okay, so, well, considering they're, um, they're uncovered, I might as well turn the uh, automatic fire on and then I'll just I'll just do a preemptive strike on these Peltists. And while they're doing that, I'm going to... Oh, oh man, I missed that. My entire um, Falksman unit just got routed. Oh. That was kind of stupid. Wasn't paying attention to that. Okay, so I'll just get my uh, my missile cap to deal with that, and I'm just going to move my um, phalanx around. As you can see here, their their uh, phalanx pikemen are getting cut up by my peltus fire. Kind of annoyed about losing that Foxman unit, but you know that's what happens when you're not paying attention. And I really wish these guys would run out of ammo sooner because I I just cannot use them as a range unit. I just have no idea what I'm doing when I'm trying to use them. I just wish I had some light cavalry or something. Okay, so these guys came back from routing, which is always good. And yeah, it's a good position as well because that means I can um, bring them around to flank. And hopefully not forget about them this time. So this, this Falksman unit is going to do the same thing as what I use the uh, other one for. I'm just going to sweep around their, uh, their hoplite phalanx position here and then just sweep in and attack them. Up here my, I've got my cav dealing with the um, peltists, which uh, they did a very good job actually. And I'm going to, they're, they're, they're routed, they're not going to come back, so I'm just going to move all my cav back here into the um, center of the battle. And these guys are going to run down and hit these guys from the flank. And they are absolutely cutting them up. And that is the general unit as well actually, so I think that's the general uh, there. He's on the ground. Go back up, but um... Ooh, man. Yeah, we just killed their general. Um, so I'm just going to quickly um... Uh, run down the routed units. Or as much as I can be bothered doing. Um, you know, I, I, this is probably the part of the battle I hate the most. It's the most tedious part, but you know, I'll just get as much of them as I can, and then we'll um, we'll move on back to the campaign map, and that that should be it for the um, for this episode. Yeah, that's enough. All right. So that was a pretty pretty small battle for us to um, start with, but, uh, you know, there's there's the results. I only ended up losing about 100 men, and I wiped out their entire army. So, you know. Alright, well guys, thanks for uh, watching. Um, this is the first episode of my um, Rome Darth Mod campaign. Um, yeah, my faction leader died. So we'll deal with that next episode. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. If you like the video, please like it. Um, if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. And um, I'll see you later. Have a good one.